are locked. Hello there, and welcome back to another ClueCon Weekly. It's David Duffett here. I'm the worldwide community advocate at SignalWire, and every week we get great guests in to talk to you, the ClueCon Weekly audience, about the different things that are going on in the realms of technology, work from home, and all sorts of other things. And I'm really pleased this week to be joined by Miguel Torres. Hi, Miguel. How are you doing? I'm fine, fine. Hello, David. How are you? Excellent, thank you. It's good to have you along. And uh, where are you speaking to us from today, Miguel? I'm speaking to you, uh, to you from Cancun, Mexico. Cancun, Mexico. It's great to have you along from there. And uh, we've known each other for a few years, Miguel, because you've been a speaker at Astrocon um, and uh, been a contributor in that way to the open source communications community. And it's very kind of you to agree to come along on the ClueCon Weekly podcast. Uh, I'd like to start off by asking you about your career and background, just before we get on to the, some, some of the subjects that you specialize in with Asterisk. So give us a, an introduction to you, please, Miguel. OK. Uh, I'm a computer systems engineer from the, well, my alma mater is National Polytechnics Institute uh, of Mexico. Uh, I'm also a professor at the Quintana Roo University. I have lectures of uh, Unix operating, si operating systems, network operating systems, wireless communications, selected topics of vo uh, voice over IP. And uh, for the last seven years, I've been a senior sysadmin at Price Travel. My role uh, there is uh, the voice over IP and computer telephony integrations leader. Uh, I develop applications and voice infrastructure so we can uh, give uh, uh, to our clients and to our uh, collaborators uh, the tools so we can have a better communication or some uh, way to communicate us with our clients uh, and provide them all the solutions that we have. Oh, great. Well, uh, sounds uh, as if you've come up through it sounds as if you did the right kind of qualifications in the first place and now you're putting them to good use and uh, as i said we came across each other in the world of asterisk and astricon uh, so tell us how did you get into using open source communication tools miguel well i was working uh, first at uh, my alma mater and a division that we were developing uh, tools for government and business uh, we use uh, web applications, uh, open source te uh, technologies there. Uh, the company that I work for right now, uh, Price Travel, uh, joined me in uh, some uh, tokens. And they were uh, very interested uh, to hire me to, so I could help them with uh, all of the problems that they had in that moment. Uh, in that moment, the company was uh, like 400 people uh, in Mexico and Colombia. And they were having uh, some issues with uh, telephony and voice over IP. Uh, at that time, I I wasn't uh, an expert on low IP, uh, bio IP, and my uh, technology director, uh, the first week, he gave me the book that we all know, the Asterix uh, cookbook, uh, right. with the 600 pages, uh, and he gave me the book and he said, uh, you have one week to become the expert of telecommunications uh, over voice uh, for voice over IP to the enterprise. And uh, in less than three, four months, I was uh, handling all the voice uh, communications for the company uh, using all the Asterisk framework, uh, using another, uh, another frameworks to uh, provide the, our contact centers the solutions that they needed for uh, conference calls, uh, for client uh, communication, advanced routes, uh, incoming routes, um, also interconnecting all the branches of our offices between and uh, making uh, the costs uh, lower so we don't have to spend a lot of uh, a lot of uh, money on the daily basis uh, communications. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so a very, very practical application of Asterisk in that first instance. You mentioned you're a professor and that you also teach some classes. 
does Asterisk or any other open source communication stuff feature in those classes? Yes, we are using a we are using the we are using Asterisk. We are using uh, the open source solutions of VoIP Monitor, and I'm introducing them Camaleo. Right. Okay. And so another open source SIP server. Um, and is that to um, load share between asterisks or um, is kind of some kind of security application? Yes, uh, I want to teach my students how they can load balance all the calls and uh, have a, a lot of instances of uh, the media instances uh, that you can use like uh, for switch or asterisk or another uh, YP uh, framework. So you can uh, have, if you have a failure, you can have uh, all your VIP infrastructure uh, running without any issue. Right, right, I see. Okay, now one of the things I know you for, Miguel, is doing work around speech stuff with Asterisk. Um, and I believe in, a, in addition to doing speech recognition, recognize, recognizing the words that are said, I believe you've done speaker recognition as well, identifying the person. Um, I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about what you've been doing there, please. Well, uh, first, we started uh, with a big problem. Uh, we, were, we are a company that is growing up uh, very fastly, so we have to build uh, infrastructure and also buildings so we can uh, have uh, the space for our collaborators to work. Uh, and that uh, pro one of the problems is that we have to migrate all our telecommunications infrastructure from some small uh, offices to a, yeah. to a big building. So in one night we were uh, migrating all the um, infrastructure uh, voice services with our telecommunication providers. And we were migrating like uh, 1,000, 1,200 DIDs and 2,000 uh, toll-free numbers from right. two, three locations to one location. So uh, we were uh, to test, we were calling manually uh, to verify that the calls were uh, properly working into the PBX. Yeah. And it was very, very hard to do that because you are like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning and you are you're, you probably make a mistake. Mm -hmm. So what we try, uh, what I was trying to do in the days, in the days later uh, from that, I was uh, having dinner and I was with my notebook and I was like, this, this cannot happen. How, how can we automate this uh, procedure? So if we have a failure, if we have something to do, another migration, I don't have to spend a, a lot of hours in front of my computer to verify that all the calls are properly getting into the PBX. So right. I was uh, research, uh, searching there at the internet and I found a tool and a, also a mechanism that I could use that is uh, called audio fingerprinting. So you have a lot of rec recordings. Those recordings, you know that it is the audio that is going to uh, play the PBX when someone calls into your PBX. Mm -hmm. So if I have these recordings, I can make an audio fingerprinting of all these recordings and compare another recording with this uh, database that, that you already have. So right. what I did uh, was uh, we have the capacity uh, to make automatic calls and record all those calls. So the calls that we were uh, making automatically, we were recording and comparing with the audio fingerprintings. And we could say that uh, a call to certain uh, number, uh, incoming number uh, uh, in the PBX was uh, perfectly routed by the provider or it wasn't uh, routed. So we could give a report to our directors and to the provider that there were failures on certain numbers or toll-free numbers, and they have to work with us to correct all the situations. Uh, that tool is called Aloha. Uh, it's open source. We developed it open source. I have my GitHub. I can provide the, suite, the link if you need that. Uh, and it has been a very powerful tool because 
Uh, for example, sometimes the clients uh, reported us that a top free number from Colombia, from Argentina, or from Mexico was not working at all. And mm -hmm. that, that uh, report was a report that uh, was like one, two weeks that, the, that we didn't notice that the number was properly uh, getting into the PBX. So with the Aloha, you can uh, schedule uh, some tests that you can uh, weekly, daily, year, monthly, and it can do all those tests automatically for you, and you get uh, an immediate warning uh, to Telegraph, Slack, or whatever you want, that all uh, this infrastructure is working very well or is not working if the, uh, the telecommunication provider is having a problem. Uh, I heard from another provider, uh, well, communications uh, company in Mexico that used Aloha, so they can they could they they can now uh, detect failures on routing of calls to mobile telephones or numbers, uh, so they can detect all these. Uh, bad configurations that they have, and they can correct them uh, with a daily report that they have with Aloha. And th their clients are very well satisfied because uh, now they don't have these uh, routing problems that they call you call and they say uh, the number is not uh, correct or they don't, the number does not exist. Uh, so there's a lot of applications for audio fingerprinting. Uh, but we, as as we were working for applications for audio fingerprinting, for example, we had a lot of call frauds. Uh, we had a lot of debt uh, collection companies that were calling to our numbers, and we have all this capacity of incoming calls to our PBX, our um, service infrastructure, was dealing with all calls, especially through the Mexican elections of the two thousand eighteen. So we were having a lot of incoming calls that were uh, taking some space available for another calls for our business, our core business. Our core business is to sell uh, to our clients or have a communication to our clients. So we were using Aloha to detect all these recordings from uh, political a uh, ads mm -hmm. and other business ads. And we, were, uh, we created an automated blacklist so we, we are having some process that is going through all the recordings and making audio fingerprinting to detect the audios and blacklist all these numbers because it, they are not going to call you from one number. They are going to call you from three, four, five, ten numbers that they uh, have uh, for make all this uh, happen with all these ads and, and calls that they want to do. So. We were having some problem because sometimes the recordings that we have on our uh, audio fingerprinting database were changed or were uh, not, uh, they were not also recordings, they were people talking to our uh, collaborators. So we decided that we needed to go a step uh, beyond, or, well, we had to improve our technology. And I was looking at uh, some uh, audio speech to text uh, technology, open source also, that is called Deep Speech. Deep Speech is developed by Mozilla Foundation. Uh, it's based on a Baidu Deep Speech uh, Recognition paper. And it's uh, using uh, an implementation of TensorFlow with machine learning. Uh, okay. that's what, well, that, let me just ask you, can, can you give me the name of that technology again, please? It's Deep Speech. What, deep Speech? Deep Speech by Mozilla. I'm with you. Okay. So, uh, deep Speech is uh, a powerful tool, but uh, the problem with this tool is that you have to have uh, a special hour. Uh, you have to have uh, GPUs installed in your servers. You have to dedicate one server especially for that, for the audio processing and all the uh, mathematical algorithms that the computer is trying to do because machine learning, uh, as we know, uh, machine learning is the way that we uh, make the computer learn how to identify a number, how to identify a, a picture in a in a picture, how to identify a car, a person, 
But all this uh, training that we are doing to the computer is uh, fit with a lot of data. We need a lot of data so we can have a, a proper model or we can uh, create a model. So it's all the information that the computer needs. So if we uh, input some data into the computer, it can detect if I'm, 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 just, I'm saying uh, hello, or I'm saying another word, and it is translate uh, transcription mm. uh, that uh, word into whatever you want a database, a file. Uh, it requires a lot of training, machine learning. Uh, we are currently using and uh, making a, a training a model in Spanish, not only Mexican Spanish. Uh, Colombian Spanish uh, and other variations of Spanish because there are certain words that you and I, uh, for example, in in every language, we uh, by by cities they have different ways to refer to someone or refer to to something. So mm -hmm. we have to to train all these models with all the info, the data we have. The the ability that we have is that we, we record all the calls that we have with our clients. So all those calls that we have, we process them and we train the machine mm -hmm. so we can have a more accurate model to yeah. transcribe all these calls. And I wanted to have an open source uh, technology because uh, all the current uh, um, implementations of uh, transcription of calls or audio are cloud-based. Uh, the problem with cloud-based is, uh, well, uh, uh, I, uh, for me, privacy privacy matters because you don't know where all the data that you are sending to the cloud is storage, who is mm -hmm. accessing all that information. And we wanted to have also a low latency service we have our transcription servers uh, next to our PBX servers. So we don't have to depend on an internet connection to transcribe all our calls. Uh, we're trying, we're well, trying and working a lot so we can uh, have the asterisk streaming through AVI and yeah. uh, connecting with deep, deep speech to have light transcription uh, for our business. Because with with the transcription that you have or the, the business, you can have uh, some certain insights and metrics to improve uh, misconducts uh, from our collaborators and bad practices. Mm -hmm. Also, you can detect uh, information like credit card uh, where PCI, PCI compiled, and we don't have to have in, on our recordings all the credit card information. Uh, we have mechanisms to avoid that, but if there is a, a recording that has a credit card information with the transcription of the calls, we can detect it and we can modify automatically the recording and delete all that information. Okay. And at the end, well, I'd just like to stop you for a minute and just ask you a little bit more of a detailed question. You were saying that you can use the transcriptions of the call recordings to raise the standards and to check for bad practice. And I would imagine that some of that is, for instance, if the agents in the contact center are meant to finish every call by saying, thank you for calling this company, have a good day. You can check to see whether they say that. And if they don't, you can make it a staff training issue, if you like. Um, but how else might you use the transcription in terms of raising standards and, and looking for bad practices? For example, you can have a, a product that the people are calling for that product and you see on the transcription that that uh, sales is, is not uh, ended. It, it, you didn't sell anything to the people, the, to, to your client, because the, uh, instead of a product that you were selling, they are asking for another product. And the sales uh, person is not going to tell their supervisor, we need that product to be available for us so we can right. sell it. Right. So you can have an automated uh, process that you can give all those insights to the managers, to the marketing people, 
to the people that are getting products to our to your company and they have all that information through uh, graphs uh, charts um, re automatic reports and all of that goodness yes excellent stuff and um that's quite a big undertaking to create your own local speech recognition engine um, because of course most people these days would be sending it off to Google Voice or Watson or whatever in the cloud but you've created this locally and so in the training has all the training been on recordings of telephone calls or have you had to also train it with local people speaking into microphones as well? We are working with the Mozilla Foundation, so we can, uh, we, uh, Mozilla Foundation uh, has their own mechanism to train the models. They have a lot of, uh, a big data set of uh, recording voices. We use that recording voices on all our uh, recorded calls because the recorded voices are, uh, are for example, I'm telling to the computer we uh, very carefully what is one, what is two, three, and all of that. But when you are dealing with the real world uh, scenario, uh, people sometimes are not in their base condition to tell you one, two, three, four. And uh, they can, uh, they, uh, there's a, a big noise uh, like uh, cars, uh, sounds, airplane mm. sounds, all of that. And you have to train the computer with all of that data so you can have a, the noise that is in the real life scenario so the computer can understand what is happening. Mm. Right, okay, well thank you Miguel. So you've told us that you've implemented that local speech recognition and you've um, used it or you're trying to use it for improving standards and, and looking for bad practices and things like that. And how's it been working so far for you or are you still developing it? Uh, you have to understand with machine learning is uh, full time developing because you have uh, machine learning is uh, is a new science that for some things work uh, very well, but some things uh, you have to train every day, every day, and every day because your uh, point of approachment is it, machine learning is for the computer is a lot of mathematical calculations. And graphically, you can see the machine learning like a graph that is trying to get to the best approach. But you are uh, only with some data, you are only looking for certain approach in the in the graphic, no? So with that uh, data, you have only a, a part of the all the of the all the the how could I say? The scenario of the all the, uh, but you are looking in a specific segment. But if you have new data, you can locate that uh, point, that that best approach into another location. So you have to train every day the the computer. Where uh, all the calls that we have, we are trying to make a. Uh, uh, we have people that is trying to to check all the transcripted calls and tell us this transcription was not accurate uh, 100%. Mm -hmm. We need to put this into the data sets to train the model. So we're training the model, we're uh, generating the model. The problem that uh, goes with generating the model is that if you don't have uh, in, an instance with uh, graphic cards, it's going to take for the computer like one year to generate a single model. If you have a uh, graphical cards, uh, it could go for one day or two days to generate a specific model. And, yeah. and, and there is something really, really fun about this. You think that, it, that you are uh, having new data to improve your model, but when you put your model into the real world scenario, uh, it's the model that you have previous than the new model, was more accurate than the new model. And it's like, oh, what happened? <laughs> and it's like- Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very iterative process, isn't it? And, and yes. in an attempt to refine it, uh, as you're saying, you can sometimes go in the wrong direction and have yes. to get back. Okay, so you've used um, audio prints or, or one might say speaker recognition or speaker verification. You're using speech recognition to do transcriptions. Are there any other 
bits of um, artificial intelligence you're using in your system, Miguel? Well, for computer telephone integration, that is an essential part of the business because, well, we have the all the communication through the voice and all of that. Uh, uh, but we have to give some better insights of the using of this uh, technology to to the business people, the people that are in charge in charge of the business. Uh, so we are trying to improve our uh, sales uh, capabilities to mm -hmm. using uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms, so we can uh, determine uh, we can say which is the best product and which is the best time to call a person because we have album calls. Uh, we can also detect which uh, preferences uh, that we're trying to profile our customer, the best, uh, uh, the best uh, customer that we could have. So when mm -hmm. you are calling this customer, you have uh, a lot of probability that you will be selling a product to this customer. Right, yeah, so you're, you're um, uh, targeting better, uh, yes. having a, a better chance of success. Now, one of the things that I remember thinking about when I worked with speaker verification at the time, um, and this was a long, long time ago where we were just, you know, using um, the, the system to see whether the person talking was the person we thought they were. Um, since then, of course, we've got this thing called sentiment analysis. So not only can you transcribe what's been said, but you can get an idea of where the person is, if they're happy or sad, and you can apply that to the agent or the caller. Um, where do you see the future of this going? I think people are already doing this in real time. So they're analyzing the sentiment or the stress level of people on the phone in real time, not just after the call. but. Have you got any idea where you see this going in the future, Miguel? Yes. Uh, besides uh, customer uh, uh, applications, uh, all uh, with the things that are happening right now with the pandemic that we have, I've already seen some uh, investigations and practical uses for uh, machine learning and audio that uh, I, I've, I haven't been able to work on, but I'm trying to uh, figure out a way that we could help. Uh, the Cambridge uh, University is working on the project COVID-19 sounds. Uh, they are gathering all these sounds about how people uh, ca uh, cough, how people talk, and how, pe how people are breathing with mm. uh, these diseases. And through the audio analysis, they can detect if you have these diseases. Uh, and I think that that is a, a very powerful tool for the uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, because mm. uh, all besides business, uh, something that matters a lot of in our society is health, uh, how uh, technology can improve our quality of life. Uh, yeah. I think that we can provide uh, and we can make technology uh, offline technology because sometimes uh, people don't doesn't have uh, internet access so we can make a powerful artificial inter intelligence uh, assistance so uh, the machine can detect through the audio or through another mechanism uh, how our health is going uh, and how are we going uh, for example uh, we are now close in our in our homes but if the machine could hear us and know that we're uh, sad, uh, we're uh, angry, or we're emotional mm. at the moment, could say to to you in a notification, mm, did you want to see a, a, a movie with uh, some how, a comedy a comedy movie, or do you want to listen music, or do you want to the, the machine will help you because. Some people in this situation are alone in their homes. So if they could have, a, my girlfriend is living with me in, in this situation, and I'm all the day working at, at, my, at, my, at my room, and she says, I feel alone sometimes with you here. I know that you are here, but you are working and you are not paying attention to me but I need something to interact with. 
So we could uh, um, when she talks with someone else uh, through uh, through the phone, through a video conference, she feels like she is not alone and she she doesn't get emotional about all the situation. But if, I imagine a world that if there's no one that can talk her with her in that moment, uh, the computer could talk with her. Uh, and make her feel like she's not alone. For example, yeah, I rem uh, yes. Yeah, very interesting. Sorry to continue. I remember a movie that uh, was with Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, the movie, the movie was called Her. Uh, he had in his phone a personal assistant, and this personal assistant helped him on the problems of the daily basis, uh, getting the email. Uh, getting the tax done uh, and letting him focus on another situation that he, the, needed the most attention from him in that moment. But it was, it was for me, it was very, very, how could I say, for, my, for me, it was important in that movie to see how technology can improve our quality of life. And, mm -hmm. and that's how I imagine the, the, the world because I, 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 sometimes I read Isaac Asimov, and I and I am expecting that kind of future that Isaac Asimov or or, or other science fiction writers uh, told us through uh, a lot of years. Yes. Uh, and that, and that's what what I want to do. The, that 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 technology help us through machine learning, through internet, inter, 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 uh, artificial intelligence, uh, make us uh, have a uh, a better quality of life if we are alone, if we have a disease, if we have a problem, if we want to make uh, some things uh, be easier to us. Yes, that's, that's interesting you should mention that because I heard um, a while ago that a company I used to work for that did speech recognition and speaker recognition was now also um, involved in a technology that could detect whether people have got Parkinson's disease by analyzing the voice on the telephone um, and also when you talked about um, the AI being used to maybe feed back to people things that would be comforting for them so whether it's you know something to lighten their mood or change their thinking uh, or whatever it might be um, I remember seeing experiments using robots in old people's homes so even though there there weren't always people able to attend there were robots to go and fetch drinks and tell things and and stuff like that. Uh, it's a very interesting world. And Miguel, it's been great to have you along. Thank you for taking the time uh, to come along. And uh, of course, at the moment, there are not any live events going on. So um, I certainly won't be meeting you face to face in the in the very near future. But I do hope that we get to meet face to face again at some stage, at an Astrocon or a Cluecon or wherever it may be. So thank you very much for coming along. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to discuss before we say goodbye? Uh, well, uh, there's a lot of companies like, uh, for example, IBM or another like Microsoft that uh, tells people and especially developers that you have to learn, develop or use some AI tools for your business or your profession. Because if you, you don't use them, you're going to be outdated. And it's it, it, like we told, uh, the, uh, delegating to the machine uh, common tasks uh, for our daily life is going to help us to have a better quality of life. And so instead that you are getting called uh, at 5 a.m. in the morning to solve a problem, let the machine solve mm. the problem. Oh, an, an interesting glimpse into the future. Okay, well, thank you very much. We'll say goodbye now. Thanks for coming along, Miguel. And I look thank forward you very to much. our next interaction. See you later. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. Okay. okay. Bye.